This is Andy Tube. And this is a Singer Model 503 that I've been restoring. And you, you may have seen some of the uh, previous videos I did that talked about removing and replacing parts, uh, needle bars, presser bars, things like that. The needle bar driving arm. And uh, the latest one I did was the, how I wash and dry the main body and then lubricate and oil after the washing um, just to test everything and prevent rust. That's where I'm at now. And uh, I thought this would be a good time to tell you about the cam stack in the Singer Model 503A. The, the problem is I can't tell you about the cam stack. And the reason why is there is not a cam stack in the Singer Model 503A. Let me take off this uh, pattern disc here and uh, show you the area. Singer called this a pattern disc. It's more commonly known as a top hat cam. But this is commonly called a cam stack in any machine that has zigzag and uh, that's really wrong and, I, and I'm guilty of calling it a cam stack and uh, this is more of a pattern selector assembly there's really not a cam stack here a cam stack would be more a stack of flat metal pattern discs pattern discs that are f flat like this part and without the top hat, top hat part and they're all stacked together and built permanently onto an eccentric shaft here. And that's the true cam stack part. Now the Singer model 500A like the 401A has a true cam stack. And let me show you a couple pictures and a part sketch of a cam stack for those models. So now you, now you have an idea of what a true cam stack is. That stack of uh, metal um, pattern disc. And this is really more of a pattern selector assembly. Um, the 503A uses different cams or pattern discs to sew different patterns and you have to physically take one out like this is cam zero zigzag and you would put in the pattern cam that you want and then you would sew that pattern um, machines that have a built-in cam stack you usually have levers and knobs and buttons on the control panel here to move move parts around inside to the cam or pattern disc that you want. So if we think of this parts more of a pattern selector assembly, uh, let me show you a part sketch of it so you, so you can see more uh, all the parts involved. So you may have noticed that uh, many of the parts of a pattern selector in a camshaft or cam stack are the same except this doesn't have the stack of metal uh, pattern discs or cams. But a lot of the associated parts have the same function. Mm. The cam stack assembly or pattern selector assembly sit on a shaft that is uh, set into the 
casting of the body. And on the Singer machines like this, there is a, see if I can get this a little closer. When you take off the light fixture in the front here, you, there's a set screw down inside this hole that holds the shaft and associated parts to the body. And this set screw holds some other shafts for other related parts. On the 401A and the 500A, you can loosen this set screw and you can pull that shaft with the cam stack right out. Like, like you saw in the uh, picture I did of the cam, showed you of the cam stack. And this functions the same way, except if you loosen the screw down here and the shaft is loose, you can't pull it all the way out because of all these associated parts. So, you know, loosening one set screw and pulling out the shaft is pretty easy, but in this case, you first have to remove many associated parts, which also isn't that bad, but the problem lies in putting them all back in and then there's many adjustments to be made to get them to function properly. And that's what's uh, time consuming and intricate. Um, and why I usually don't remove these parts, if I can get them clean and if they function okay, or I can just adjust them in place to function okay, then I don't see the necessity of taking all this assembly out. So <clears throat> let me uh, let me show you some more though. This this part up here is um, called a stud screw and spring assembly, and you just put a straight blade screwdriver right on the top of that stud screw, and you can unscrew it and it holds the stud spring in place so stud screw screw driver slot and the stud spring is this has three little zigzaggy springs that uh, stick up and that's the combination of those two is what puts pressure and holds the pattern disc in place when you put it on. And now we can see uh, that the very top of the shaft is right here where that screw stud goes into. And this part right here See if I can move it a little bit. See how it, it wants to move up? I can't take it out because of all these associated parts. In the 500A with the cam stack, these parts are moved over a little bit and don't block the removing of the cam stack. But here, it blocks these parts. But this part, um, is called uh, the disc driving worm wheel. Disc driving because as the motor and the shaft turns, it drives the disc around and around in a clockwise circle. The pattern disc. Okay. And it's called a worm wheel because at the base of it, let's see if I can get another light here. There's like a wheel full of gears. See all those little teeth in there? Those mesh up with the worm gear 
on the horizontal shaft. Set it back down in there. So, and those gears go 360 degrees around the disc driving worm wheel. So it just keeps going around in a clockwise circle as this main horizontal shaft turns. And what it sits down inside of here, um, you see this metal ring with the stitch width adjusting lever right there. Uh, this is called the bite amplitude selector. Now bite is Singer's word for zigzag. Bite, B-I-G-H-T. So when you're adjusting the width of your zigzag stitch this uh, bite amplitude selector is what controls that. And underneath it are two uh, what's called stop plates. So you have to set the limit of the bite amplitude. And it's, it's not really the space up here that sets the limit. It's the stop plates underneath that set the limit. And um, so I'm going to need that other light again. The plates are attached at the back bottom. You see those two screws back here? They kind of look like screws in a washer. It's one on the left and one on the right. That's really not a washer, it's just the end of the stop plate. And then the stop plate is angled out, the left and the right. They're kind of angled out like that. You know, not straight, but out towards the edges of the bite amplitude selector. And they have to be adjusted to match the zigzag stops. How wide your zigzag. Over here straight stitch and then wider and wider and wider zigzag until it hits the stop. So uh, these, that part eventually has to come off too to get everything out if you just wanted to take the the worm wheel out for cleaning and so forth you still have to remove all these parts over here and besides uh, that selector and that sits on the shaft right we talked about that but you have uh, front and rear index pins under here too and uh, let's see if I can get my pointer turn this a little bit So these index pins are adjusted for height and uh, spacing. And if you saw my video of how to remove the needle bar driving arm, and when I was showing you how to put it back in, uh, things had to be lined up in the back and the front of this plate which I, I call a paddle, but they call it a plate. But the index pins help control how that moves and also um, the height. When you move your needle position from left to center or right, those index pins uh, can move up and down especially the back one there, and they have to line up with the pattern cam. And those have little assemblies that all have to be taken out. And then you have this big eight part assembly up here 
that's uh, called the disk follower assembly. And I'm going to call that the disk follower assembly pin. I don't, I don't know if they particularly called this a name, just the disk follower assembly. But it's made so when you put the disk on, it follows along the pattern. Put that disk back on. It follows along the pattern that's cut into the disk. So as the machine is running, this follower will come out and move that needle bar driving arm that way for sewing and then it will follow when the pattern goes cut deeper and it helps move the needle bar into the correct position for sewing the pattern. So this whole assembly has to come out. So you can you can see um, no, oh, there's another thing here too, down in here called the needle bar uh, driving arm plate disengaging mechanism, right? So the needle bar driving arm, right, the plate, and there's a mechanism that drives it, right? That, so that it moves the needle back and forth while you're sewing any type of a zigzag. Well, there has to be a disengaging mechanism. It can't be there all the time because if you move your width to straight, you don't want that needle bar driving arm moving left and right. It's got to be stationary so the needle bar just goes straight up and down for straight stitching. And that's down under here too and has to come out. So if you take all those, all that stuff out, you can pull out the worm wheel for, for cleaning. Down in here, there's nothing to adjust. It's just the worm wheel mating or meshing with the main horizontal worm gear. Oops, sorry. That's right down there. See, I... Uh, See if I can get a better view of that. It's kind of hard to see. You, you can see it if you're looking at the machine. If you look right, yeah, you still see it? Yeah, okay. I need two hands. <laughs> I want to hold the light and want to, want to point. But right down here is that worm gear that's just cut right into that main horizontal shaft and that is what the worm wheel uh, gear or teeth line up with so there's nothing to adjust it just sits down in there all the way it's all of these mechanisms that make it function properly so when you take all these mechanisms out, you could take that out to clean it, okay, and then put it back in, but then you have to put all this stuff back in, and you have to adjust it, and adjust it, and adjust it, and there's spacing requirements, some things that have to have a 0 .010 inch gap, there's height requirements, depth requirements, the stop pins have to be set just right to get your zigzag stitch. And to me, it is a lot of meticulous work. It's not physically hard, you know, it's just screws. But it is time consuming and meticulous. And sometimes you feel that you have it set properly on a part that goes on first. And then, for example, when you put the disc follower on and set it, something seems a little bit off. You find out, oh, one of the index pins isn't at the quite, quite the right height. So you have to take this all off and go down and adjust that again. 
put it back on and then readjust the top parts. So to me, um, what I try and do is pre-treat the worm wheel area, all of these parts, but especially down here, the worm wheel area and where it matches up with the worm gear on the main shaft. If you saw some of my videos, this, this machine was under maintained, which was okay for me. Uh, no, nobody's husband squirted a bunch of axle grease in here and stuff like that. And, but I still would pre-treat this area and let it soak. And, and um, you can get small nylon bristle brushes and stuff in here if it's real bad. Then you saw my main wash and rinse in the bathtub. I hope you watched that video. And you can really blast out that area with water. And you know before you finish you can look in there and if you're still seeing chunks of black or brown dried up grease something like that put some more cleaner on there I use the crud cutter and you know blast it again but I can usually get this clean to my satisfaction even some ones that have been very nasty and um, if I can get it clean, why would I want to, to spend all the time dismantling this and, and resetting it and adjusting and testing? I don't want to do that. <laughs> so my advice is before you try and disassemble all this stuff, think twice uh, if you really need to. Uh, maybe think three or four times <laughs> before you do it. Um, it's it's just not worth it to me now there's tests that can be performed to see if all this stuff is adjusted correctly and if the test fails there's instructions on how to set each little setting if you need to but maybe out of all the adjustments here you have one that's a little bit off maybe your index pin isn't coming up high enough on the pattern disk so you can you can adjust that setting or maybe your amplitude stop is a little bit off and your your stitch width won't go all the way to four it's only making a three and a half wide stitch so you can you can work on adjusting that without everything so uh, I can't do those tests for you now because I need everything reassembled. It has to be a functioning machine so that you can test uh, the pattern and the, the zigzag and make sure the timing is okay. So once I've cleaned all the small parts and put everything back together, that is one of many tests I perform on the machine. And I hope to do videos of that test. And, and who and who knows when when I do that testing, uh, something may be off. Like the the follower has to be timed to the pattern selector and the pattern disc, or else the needle position won't be right when it's trying to you know sew the pattern. So there's a timing there, and sometimes that can be off, and it's it's pretty easy to fix. A couple of screws here, and you set the needle bar a certain way, and then you adjust this a certain way and tighten it back up. And that's not too bad. So we'll see as we go along. Now you can definitely easily take off that top stud and spring and go down in here and make sure this area gets clean I didn't do it this time but I a lot of times I will take that off when I do my cleaning to be sure this area gets clean so you can do that people have a tendency to you know drop oil down in there and over oil and stuff like that so you can you can do all that and take this off to clean with your small parts and so forth that's fine, but that's that's just my advice and my opinion about the pattern selector mechanism. 
on the 503A, which is virtually identical to the 403A. It's just like the 401A mechanisms and the uh, 500A are very, very similar. You know, a lot of the parts are the same. So that's it for this one. I hoping to show you things that you don't find anywhere else on YouTube not only to keep it interesting but to help you understand better how your vintage machine works and cleaning it maintaining it and adjusting it so if that was worth your time maybe you will uh, come back and see Andy Tube another time your comments questions subscriptions they're always welcome you know that's up to you but thanks for tuning in for this video. Take care.